All right. Back to it. Figure out what's going on with this. <laughs> so this is constraint. FK series ID of relation streams does not exist. Streams. Huh. So one possibility is that this down migration is also broken. Alter table streams add constraint FK series ID foreign key series ID references series ID. Yes. Alter table streams streams. Yeah. Drop constraint. Okay. So we're saying that didn't work, right? That's what we're saying. But yeah, that FK series ID is still there. Uh, local series ID, reference ID, public.series. And then episode still has a constraint, right? Which is also called FK series ID. Uh, do I still have the uh, Postgres docs? Nope. Postgres boost. <laughs> Postgres uh, constraint drop. Yeah, alter table. Uh, how about, I think we're on 15 right now. Alter table drop um, constraint. Constraint name. Okay. We know the constraint exists. This form drops the specified constraint uh, on a table along with any index underlying the constraint. The if exists is specified. If if it exists, it's specified. And if straight does not exist, no error is thrown. Well, we wouldn't want that because otherwise I wouldn't have realized that my uh, down migration was wrong. Also, you should test down migrations. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Huh. This validate constraint is really interesting. The idea that you can create a constraint as not valid. See notes below for usefulness. That requires scanning the table to verify that the existing rows meet. Yep. Yep. not valid. The add constraint command does not scan the table and can be com committed immediately. It's very helpful. After that, a validate constraint command can be issued to verify the existing row status of the constraint. Cool. Not really relevant to what I'm doing. <laughs> it's just uh, interesting. So here we go, alter table distributors, add constraints. Here, let's uh, let's do side by side. All right, so we have, we have this for the down, we have this for the up. There we go. And so we're doing alter table streams, um, add constraints. Um, yeah, the quoting shouldn't matter. Foreign key. To add a foreign key constraint to a table, 
alter table x, add constraint, the name, foreign key, column, references table, column. at least impact on other work. Oh yeah, then you can use that valid. That's cool. Um, never use partition tables. So why doesn't alter table streams drop constraint name network. Let's just try MPG admin. Query tool. Now that works. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, let's, let's recreate that then. Otherwise, it'll be inconsistent. Yeah, see, that's fine. So, now I'm confused. Uh, rolling back migration. Failed to run. Uh... Yeah, so this is this is the down migration it's trying to do, right? Add series ID to stream down. Constraint FK series ID. A relation streams does not exist. Is its claim. So what's different here? Let's, let's try um, try that again. Is it revert? Is that the right command? Uh, let's see. Okay, at least these are the ones that I added, right? Run, redo, revert, generate. So revert should be the one, right? Quit API. Rolling back migration. One three zero head series ID to stream failed to run constraint FK series ID of relation streams does not exist. That's odd. Also, the column is unnecessary there. Let's try that again. It's really odd because I literally just ran the same SQL and did it did work. What if I do both? Aha. Ah right, this is unnecessary. <laughs> right. I drop the series ID and then the constraint can't exist anymore, so it, it deletes itself. Baseball. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Did that? Uh, did that auto roll back then because it erred? I'm not sure. Let's just let's re-add all of this just to be sure. Cool. Okay. It did auto roll back. So that means that uh, should also fix. The down migration here because if we drop the column then the constraint goes away too all right so that should be good so now if i run task and i do migration revert 
it succeeds, and then I can run task migration run. And that also succeeds. All right, we did forward, backwards, forward. So that that's how you test the migration. <laughs> All right, uh, so back to the list of things to do. Uh, there we go. Okay. So add series ID to stream table, did it. Mm. You know, I need to uh, click that button really quick. My extension's updated and I kept on putting it off because I was like, I don't want to interrupt stuff, but it only takes a second to get that done. Uh, right, so the next thing is to update the backend to do stuff with the series ID. Um, a thing that I often forget. So the, the schema.rs is auto automatically updated by uh, diesel as part of uh, how it works, right? So when we look at streams, there's now a series ID on streams. That's a nullable UUID. Very nice. Um, and then in models.rs, it does not automatically update the um, stream struct to have that. So you gotta do that yourself. Pub, bup, pub. Uh, this is a series ID, option UUID. I think that's what I want. Or do I want string? Am I using UUID as a type in here? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so that means our stream struct that represents the stream has this field series ID that can have a UUID that represents the ID of the series the stream is a part of. So then in um, in stream, this is where all of our handlers are. Um, I guess I think we have to like potentially visit each one of these. How does this work? Uh, bulk stream request. No, I think potentially this week, let me just save this to have Rust Analyzer running on it. Okay. Because it's an optional field, we, ooh, do I want to include this in the create view? Um, so maybe let's say yes. So create stream request. So in our structs .rs, we have all these different structs for uh, serializing and deserializing kind of the representation of the stream record. So add a new one here called uh, stream uh, series ID. go and it's optional and then update stream request we also need the stream ID optionally and then in stream detail view we also need the uh, oh, it's called series ID <laughs> uh, and then same thing here series ID Okay. And then in the simple view. So the simple view is the representation of the record that contains the fields that we want to show essentially in the list view. Um, or like in a drop down to select from. So for that, we don't need the series ID in that kind of view. So we do also don't need to update the from stream for stream simple view um, in either of these cases. 
and then video clip from mind view doesn't need to be updated so here we go so for the stream detail view which is the the struct that represents the set of fields that we have in like the edit view in the ui here we do need uh the series id uh and this looks right so we're gonna essentially take the UUID that exists inside a series ID, if if it exists, if, it, if there's something in there, and we'll turn it into a string. Uh, and if there's nothing in there, then it just flows through as none, which is compatible with our type here of option string. Uh, so that is good. What's he yelling at me about? Nothing, it's out of date. Okay. And then an update. Um, the update stream change set. I think that's just the find up here, right? There it is. Also needs to have the series ID. And then we can check to see. Add this condition to our is empty function. Then, don't need to change any of this because it's just for the interior video clip. And then, here we go. Looks good. So that should cover the update case, except there's an error. There's an error because this is option string and this is, no, that's fine. What's the problem? As change set, um, gotta love the errors. The trait appears on table schema streams table is not implemented for std string string. Um, something we did something to do with the okay maybe maybe this needs to be UID. Does that make you happy? That makes this happy because that's now compatible with the type for the table. And then this is unhappy because this needs to be, you need to translate, um, this needs to be like dot map. No, definitely not too out. <laughs> UID something, parse str unwrap. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So this needs to be like, uh, let's just call it X. Now this is still not great because this unwrap can panic if we fail to parse it as a string. Uh, really, honestly, the thing to do here would be to change this to take a UUID. Except, uh, yeah, 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 import from there. Is that acceptable as a deserializable thing? This is what I should be doing, right? If I, if I include like a specific type, not just a string that also is deserializable, then that just kind of flows through. And that means when I'm taking the body dot um, series ID, I can just directly use that. I don't have to worry about parsing that here. Yes. So I know there's a bunch of places where I'm not doing that. Um, because of course I've been working on this project for like six months. And at the start of this, uh, I had not done any rust in years. So this is kind of a spectrum of <laughs> getting back up to speed. 
uh, on how to do things better ways. And of course, I, I don't think, yeah, before this project, I had not used Axum either or really done any kind of web app dev with Rust, more like library, like algorithm work. So learning. All right, anyway, so I'm trying to fix the little rubber feet on my keyboard stand. I need to get some super glue or something. Some CA glue. Okay, so that's the update case. Um, get one. Um, didn't need to be updated for this. Uh, really nothing else does because the changes in structs and in, in converting to stream detail view handle, you know, the field. Um, honestly, another thing that I could be doing is doing the same thing for like this update chain stream chain set where like I have like a from implementation and like all of these details are like in one place um, and really moving out the details of like the basically the how to go from the external delivery of the payload to um, what goes into the database kind of in one place and then the endpoints then are easier to reuse you just have to tell them about the types and that could be a macro that is what i had tried to do at some point with uh like get list is make a macro that i could reuse um that didn't really work out too well and i kind of backed out of that although i do have this create predicate macro no i have this Create order expression macro um, for the the ordering stuff. So figuring out how to like where to uh, extract out things for reuse is something that I'm probably going to want to come back to at some point. Uh, just kind of a bit over all over the place at the moment. Uh, right. So for filtering though. Right, we have a create predicate function, which is down further, further down in this file, which is where we're doing all the filtering logic because we gotta, we need to have this filter in two places: one to get the count of records that match the filter, and then to get the actual page of records. So I have a function that handles that, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say. Uh, here we want to filter by series ID. So we'll do this, and maybe this is even right. Just let let compile it right for a little bit, and see what it does. So we're gonna check to see if we have a series ID inside of this filter. Um, this is like a. Uh, a JSON sturdy whatever value. So it's basically an object from the front end. And we'll check to see if we have a series ID. If we do, then we attempt to parse it as a UUID. Uh, and if that succeeds, then we uh, make a filter based on the series ID. So we say only get records that have that series ID. Otherwise, we trace an error uh, and then just we make a condition that's that's always true the id is not equal to null um, so that this th these cases are no ops they don't change what the filter does because they don't really have a way to express to nothing um, as far as i know in terms of building up this filter and then so the way this works is then i just do a dot and so this this ands all the filters together and that, that's not right uh, expected str found series. Okay, so this name has a conflict because series ID is also the name of a column, and so that conflicts. Uh, so let's just call it something that's not going to conflict. If I could just type a little bit value. And it's okay if the. See. Here, here you can literally see 
the nature of the problem. There's this series ID thing that's provided by diesel and we want to compare it to the value that we're extracting from the filter. Uh, and, but they can't have the same name. Okay, so what's what's the problem now? Um, right, so I've seen this before. So found struct bool, uh, or expected struct bool, uh, found struct nullable bool. Um, I've solved this before. There's a thing that we need to do here. I don't like this unwrap. Um, hmm. the question is, was that solution in this file? F nullable lowercase yeah searching for null is not gonna be uh, sarda rs assume not null um, before the dot eq That makes the error go away. <laughs> so what does this do? Converts this potentially nullable expression into one which will be assumed to be not null. This method has no impact on the generated SQL. However, it will enable you to attempt a serialization of the return value in a non-option. This is meant to cover for cases where you know that the given where clause uh, feels like there's a word missing there, where you know that Oh, where you know that given the where clause, the field returned by the dat database will never be null. Uh, well, we're building we're building where clause. It doesn't know that, right? But we're we're building a condition to include inside of a where clause. So we just want to do this because we don't care if it's null. Then it won't equal series ID value, so it's not going to matter. Yep. Uh, one sec. Distracted. Yeah, there we go. Cool. All right. So that takes care of filtering for the um, series, filtering streams by series and updating streams and uh, the stuff in this file covers um, like retrieving. Uh, I guess there is a create case too, um, but it wasn't on the list. So at least for now, I don't know that I need to put that in there or in create bulk because so the, the most likely the most likely use case right now and how I, how these records are created getting created th these days is through the this twitch import function where i go down here and then hey look here's today's stream that's still underway click this i click import i'm not going to do that right now because the, the numbers aren't done duration is not correct yet um but you click that and that uses bulk create in stream to create a stream um, but the information from here isn't going to know which series it is in this workflow. So this is going to import and then I'll go into stream and then I'll edit the stream. Uh, and that'll be where I select the, which series it is. So I only need that field in the edit and not in, uh, create, right? In fact, I basically don't use this this air, this create version of the field 
uh, anymore. Although I might, you know, in ex exceptional circumstances. Okay, so that covers a lot. Let's go back to the list of stuff. All right, add series. Okay, so not the front end stuff, but the back end stuff. Uh, update, get one, get list with filter. Okay, so let's build. Let's see, is this much faster? Like with no changes, this took like three seconds. With changes, I mean, we still have to recompile um, the CRUD API service uh, image um, stuff. But we are um, 175 out of 216 at 30 seconds. So it does look like we're running cargo builds in all of the builders, but that generally does not take that long in and of itself. So this is looking good, looking good. Uh, maybe the time spent at the beginning of the stream on this Docker stuff was uh, worth it after all. It does feel like it's faster. Maybe I should wait until it's done before I say that. <laughs> Almost there, though. All right, and we have recreated the CRUD API. So that's the back end. Uh, I guess we could look at the front end next. So on front end, the way I've organized things is I have this resources folder and then we have streams and then we have a edit view and a list view uh, and a show view too, although I basically never use this. So I'll, I'll leave that as is for now. Um, so the, the list view dictates what fields show up in the list view. So you what you do is you use the list component from uh, from React Admin, right there. And then you use a data grid to indicate like how the contents of the list is rendered. And I can like pass in my own components for bulk actions and aside for the calendar view. Streams filter is a component that I've made that then in turn uses React Admin components to build out the filter list. So like if we want to add a filter for the um, series, then what I need here is, what do I need? How do I do that? I need an input. It needs to be like a reference input, I think. Uh, this is Copilot's guess as to what I want, uh, because I have a lot of places in the code where I talk about topics. It's basically like tags or labels uh, is a thing that I was going to do and I've just not gotten around to doing. So, uh, but this is actually going to be like series ID. And the reference is series. This is basically reference here is the um, kind of record that, that, that is being related to via the field series ID. So in the stream record, there's a field called series ID, and then there's a kind of record called series. Uh, let's see, control shift F. Double check that I'm doing this right. Yeah, it's just lowercase, it's, that, that's how I'm doing it. Uh, and then we don't need a label, that can auto figure itself out. Um, and then select input option text name is name. I guess I have an example here. There we go. Except it's field, right? Oh, it's title. Title is the the field inside of the series record uh, that I want to use to 
like populated drop down. There we go. And we'll just add that um, reference input and select input. And there we go. So I think I didn't intend in the list view to actually add the series as a column. It's enough columns as is. But what's going to happen now is that in streams, if I go to add filter, there is a series. And I can filter by series. And no results found because nothing is associated to a series right now at the stream level. Okay, so then the next step, I think that is all I wanted to do with the list view. Uh, add filter for series in the stream list view, check. Add series select to the stream edit view. Um, so very conveniently, like if I go back to the streams filter and I copy this bit here, uh, if I go to edit, so the the edit view here is a little bit more complicated. I'm using this tab form and tabs from React Admin to kind of organize things. So we have a summary tab here that has this initial information. I think I'm gonna sneak in the series information, probably actually right under the title. And I just need to import. Um, reference input select input was already there so now if I go back to the front end and we go into say this day 20 so the last Monday stream now there's a series drop down I can select GT horizons and save and oh yeah we still have the same issue where uh, it kind of hangs but eventually it will save and then uh, that record will have the series. Hmm. I don't, I'm not excited about the idea of going back to every, <laughs> every stream to add the series. I may not do that. This may just be a thing for going forward. Um, yeah, and we don't have a debug option because I did not have the dev tools open. Uh, So I wonder what it's going to take to resolve this. Um, I wonder what's going on. So when I profiled this for the stream, I was looking at, it looked like basically every frame in the, prof the React uh, dev tools profiling it was this, this, literally the save button provoking re-renders. And it was just like constantly re-rendering. And I'm not sure what's going on with that. I'm not sure why that's happening. But uh, it's definitely a problem. Okay. Did that actually save though? It did. Hey, look. So if I go back to the streams list view and I add a filter for series and I select GT New Horizons, one record, success. All right, so associate series to stream is done. Now there's the rest. <laughs> uh, populate series into episodes. Uh, Okay, the last two are kind of tied into, like the the funny thing is, is that the real value, the thing I wanna get out of this, we can't really get it until we go through the whole thing, but 
at least um, populate series into episodes. Actually, there's one more thing isn't there. Um, no, 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 that's, that's right. Because currently, um, although I need to test this again, currently the idea is that when the episode is uploaded to YouTube, that it looks at the series the episode is linked to and gets the playlist ID and adds the episode to the playlist based on that. So if we can just populate the series into the episode when we create the episode from the stream, that does have benefit in and of itself. So let's do that. Um, we're gonna wrap up here pretty soon. Maybe we can figure out who we're gonna raid after this, but let's do one more thing. So populate series into episodes. So there is a piece of functionality in the front end from the stream. That's the, um, is that from the timeline view? Right, we have bulk create episodes button. So where is that? That's up here. So the way this works is we are defining this mutation. So we have this mutate function that we call and then on success we notify, you know, whatever. So there's a button you can click to create the episodes. And then what we do is we call bulk create with episodes as the type of bulk creation that we're doing. And then these segments uh, are translated into the episodes. Um, so, huh. And then we have the record. So the record in this context is the stream. So we will have the stream, um, the streams record. So we'll have the series ID from there. So the question is when we call bulk create here on the data provider, so we open up the data provider again, data provider. So this is my code that I use to like tell react admin how to, um, call some other data provider. I'm basically instantiating it and then I proxy out things. So this is like how I have the front end talking to a special API that talks to Twitch for me for the, the Twitch stream import stuff. And otherwise, otherwise we use the CRUD data provider. And then in this base data provider, I then add custom methods on top of it. And so there should be a bulk create function here. You, you give it a resource and you give it data and so this is a put to the, not to an individual record, but overall. So I, I've said so quite a lot. Uh, in CRUD API, SRC handlers episode, there is a bulk create. We're gonna create bulk. Uh, and this is what's being called from that data provider uh, function. So that takes a bulk create episode request, which contains a, a vector of create episode requests. And so, oh, it already takes optionally the series ID. Isn't that convenient? So that means that just passes through whatever is passed in from data, uh, which means that all I really need to do is pass series ID like that. And that connects everything up. Um, do I, do we want to test this? <laughs> uh, let, let's, let, let, well, let me, let me leave it unchecked until we test it. So to test this, um, I'm trying to do things in order here, so let's not do that one yet. Let's uh, sort by stream date again. So, day 10, I need to upload to YouTube yet, but it has episodes. Day 11 is, I guess, the next one. Right, 
right? Because I'm, I'm filtering for things that don't have episodes, that I'm not episode, episodified. <laughs> uh, all right, so I can put this in GT New Horizons. And then, yeah, day 11, that looks good. And then video clips, I should have this. Transcript, I should have that. I wanna have these, all of the data elements present before I break out the, uh, the episodes. Oh, check status. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's going to prevent me from uh, making episodes from this, isn't it? All right, it's processing. This doesn't take too long. It does take a couple minutes. Uh, but yeah, so I, I don't know if I've actually shown the whole like end to end process. I guess I've shown bits and pieces. I guess the one thing that I've not shown on stream is like actually getting it into resolve and rendering out. I, I think a recent stream, I did pull up resolve and show some of that, but yeah, anyway, it's, I mean, the funny thing is, is over the course of the last six months, I <laughs> have gotten from more familiar and like learned shortcuts and stuff in DaVinci Resolve as well on the editing side of things. And so that's just gotten easier. But even with that said, I do think I wouldn't say the amount of time I've spent on this tool has is being made up for with like the, the, the automation yet, but it definitely like, just for, forgetting the sunk cost, right? Just forgetting the sunk cost. Uh, now that it exists, it is an improvement because then I can import the timelines and it, it saves me a few clicks. It saves me trying to figure out where the files are and dragging them in and uh, just gives me a good starting place to then fine tune things before I render out the, the files. And it's going to be even better, right? We had to get this far and build all this stuff to figure out how to do the things to make an even better application. I guess the other way of approaching this from the beginning would have been just to make a tool where I drop the video files in and made it do what I was doing at the very beginning when I was streaming and then started uploading to YouTube where I just took all the files, stitch, stitched them all together and threw them in a single upload um, without any of the AI stuff, without anything. Just a very simple MVP where it like I'm not even using DaVinci Resolve, you know, th there was a simpler MVP for this application that I could have done, but that would not have been, it would have been, in my opinion, like for what I wanted to do, it wouldn't have been suitable. It wouldn't have matched up. Uh, so that required a few more steps to get it to be able to do the things that I wanted it to do to like not take steps backwards. Um, yeah, we're processing. I do have an item on the uh, the list for the project to have this like auto refresh. Uh, we use uh, WebSockets or something and have it push status back. So that I don't have to, you know, Click the button. Check status. Or I'm making an API call to the task API every time I click check status. See? <laughs> It's probably time that I should probably start looking for who we're gonna raid, I think. Uh, let's go run the switch. 
task running. Uh, let's see, who am I following? Satelix must have just started streaming because they're sitting in zero viewers. Uh, oh yeah, I literally just got the notification. Poke loyalty. Points three, next goal increased, stone drop chance. So you didn't have it and you, you missed the two. No seal for you. Uh, let's see, we might read Setelix. Setelix is uh, loading. They are VTuber. They're doing coding, uh, game dev stuff. Computer addicted humanoid, yeah, yeah. So that will probably be the raid target. Let's see. Okay, well, I want you to just imagine. <laughs> Been busy, got a big interview tomorrow. Exciting. Do you, are you, are you excited about the big interview tomorrow? I'm guessing you would not have said big if you were not. All right, so if I click into one of these, do I have the data here? Yeah, cool. Oh, that's kind of a mess. There we go. Pretty nervous, but excited as well. Yeah, a trick I learned, <laughs> this, this, this feels like one of those, the stupid things that people say is the life hack that doesn't work until you, you know, shift the way you think about it. But instead of, instead of being nervous, you're excited, right? Just like change the words that you use until <laughs> if I get the job, I'll be relocating to the US. Wow. Well, then you won't be so many time zones away. If so. Uh, East Coast, West Coast, somewhere in the middle. Yeah, so this is what it looks like once the like the um, uh, silence detection stuff works, and then we have the the, the segments, and so that I can click start create bulk bulk episodes. Nope. <laughs> oh, Canada. Well, Canada has uh, East Coast, the West Coast, and somewhere in the middle as well. <laughs> Is it? It's not quite the other side. Ottawa? Okay, okay. Centralish? Well, not. Yeah. I don't know if that's Central Time or Eastern. Maybe it's Eastern. Anyway. Yes, Canada. Uh, I don't, um, mm, Ottawa. Where am I thinking then? I don't think so. Yeah, it's in Ontario and uh, Ontario. <laughs> I think that'll still be uh, like at least two hours ahead of me. Uh, I am Pacific time. So in the US, uh, in the mainland US, there's Pacific, Mountain, Central, and Eastern. And then there's Alaska and Hawaii and they have their own thing. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, so this is the timely stuff we can create. We can start bulk create episodes. Do I wanna do this? Is this safe to do? Uh, oh, it's like not going to work anyway. I don't have a series. Well, anyway, hopefully that works. I'm going to find out later when I actually go through this process. But for now, I think we're going to we're going to wrap things up here.